Hey gang, I'm Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with Zach Blair of Rise Against. Zach, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. That's you um, you are trapped in a hotel room right now, right? I'm in a hotel room. We started our tour last night in Cleveland, um, and we have today and tomorrow off, and then the first like like big show of the tour is here in New York City. So I'm in New York City. We just got here, actually. It's, I mean, two days off in New York City. That's kind yeah. of like you're a kid in a candy store right now. No, I know. I love the the museums here, which I know is probably contradictory to what people think of musicians, you know, but I'm sort of a dork. So I always go to the MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art. I go to the Met when I'm here. I try to hit up as many as I can. So, yeah. Well, it's actually you bring up the museums and um, the, the you know, that's not so rock and roll, man, that you're going and looking at art. But um, I love the way you are described, actually, on your Wikipedia page, if you haven't looked at this recently. Oh, um, Zach Blair, straight edge. Yeah, it's so silly. You know, I, I'm a guy that's never smoked, drank or done drugs. And so like um, and that's not because I was aligned to any punk rock movement. I was a kid. I just decided not to do it. My parents did smoke drink and do drugs like a lot of and so my brother and i made the decision it wasn't it wouldn't have been rebelling you know it was just mm -hmm. kind of like well let's just not do that and we just never did and then i found out there was a hardcore movement called straight edge and sort of aligned myself to it when i was younger but yeah I, you know i'm i'm in my 40s now like i just i just don't do it i never have mm -hmm. um and I, somebody else had told me that and it's like I mean, I have nothing against the movement at all, but but and and I and I was proud to be a part of it myself. But to claim it now is like you yeah. know, I just I just don't partake in stuff. I'm sort of I'm a boring person is essentially what I'm getting at. Uh, but there's other great boring rockers mm -hmm. just like you. I, I've always been surprised to find out, you know, like D. Snyder of Twisted Sister. Yeah, right. Doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. What do you doesn't do? Drink. John Five. I mean, you look at John Five, the guitarist, mm -hmm. uh, Rob Zombie. And you're like, oh, this guy's gonna party hard. He's like not vegan uh, i just like my non-dairy stuff <laughs> yeah and uh frank zappa which not a particular yeah. didn't uh you know it's 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 funny you can name the people off you know what i mean there's not that many uh, for uh, unfortunately this lifestyle does lend itself to to doing that you know that stuff is plentiful it's offered to you at the ready um and uh it's re it's real easy to fall into that you know i just never let myself do it it's I'm not the most disciplined person, but fortunately, I've been disciplined in that area. Well, let's talk about the Rise Against tour. You said you kicked it off uh, just the other night in Cleveland, because Cleveland rocks. You're yeah, doing yeah. New York City. Um, what other cities are on the roster that we can look forward to? And then let's talk about some of the venues that you're looking forward to. It's pretty much the kind of horseshoe of America. You know, we're going down the East Coast now and then, you know, into Florida and stuff and then across, you know, New Orleans and Texas, where I'm from. And so... Um, and then across up to you know Colorado, up the up the West Coast. So, um, and I believe ending in Chicago. So it's kind of doing you know, if you live in the if you live in the U.S., it's it's there's going to be a show close to you somewhere. So the the reason we have you here today, besides plugging uh, your awesome band Rise Against, uh, is you. to plug a great new show we have on Access TV. It's called if these walls could rock, which yeah. I love the name. Cause I mean, it, it just, it, you know exactly where we're going with this. Uh, we are traveling around the country and looking in depth um, in a beautiful format at some iconic music venues. And at each venue, not only do we learn about the history, but we have a band that participates in putting on a show at these venues. And Rise Against was uh, so kind to do that with our upcoming episode for the season finale. It's Wednesday, August the 11th at the Aragon Ballroom. Let's talk about this venue because it is pretty intense when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, it's an amazing place. Inside, it looks like a scene out of Arabian Nights or something. So it looks like you're outside when you're inside. So the ceiling is painted like the night sky and there's constellations and stars. So it looks like you're in this really beautiful sort of outdoor garden inside of this venue. You know, it's one of those places like I would suppose like the old Roseland Ballroom here in New York City. Uh, Kane's Ballroom in Tulsa, where you know people's grandparents used to go and dance and see the big bands of the time. So it's one of those um, uh, unfortunate play. You know, it's it's fortunate that it's still there, but it, you know, a lot of those places have gone the way of the Buffalo because there's so much real estate to them. You know, that mm -hmm. land developers and things like that always put some other businesses there because there's so much. You know, it's such a huge ballroom, and so 
in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, when the big bands were the thing and then, you know, you needed to have a big ballroom to dance, that was the thing until those venues opened up. This is one of the ones that fortunately has stayed fairly in its, you know, original state and been renovated and somebody's taken the time to give it some care uh, that had been shuttered, of course, during COVID. And we were one of the first things, you know, to shoot the show at these walls could rock. And so now they're about to start opening up and having shows and stuff. So it's just great. It was great. It was great to be able to, to, to play there. We've had so many great shows there. Now, I, I'm, you know, listen, I work at the network, so I was able to preview the episode before right. it actually aired. Sorry, you guys. It's yeah. amazing. Everything that you're describing is so beautiful. Um, two things in the episode that really stuck out to me. One is that your drummer from Rise Against, he mentions that his grandparents actually had performed at this venue yeah. back in the day. Yeah, his, his, his grandfather's name was Will Back, and he was the head of the, the band leader of a big band, his own big band, and, and his grandmother sang and played piano. Um, yeah, it's it's in a crazy it's a crazy story. And he had all the some of the flyers and promotional material from it and everything. It's amazing. Yeah. The it's other thing cool. that's interesting about this venue um, that it sometimes is criticized as not having good sound, good acoustics for the bands. And people have to remember, obviously, this wasn't built for a rock and roll band, so the acoustics were made differently. But the um, the audio engineers do bring up the point that listen, if you got if you got a good engineer with you and you got a good sound guy, it's going to sound good. Um, right. Let's broad strokes talk about having to deal with sound differing from venue to venue when you are on tour um, and just the sound check process and how grueling or easy it can be depending on a venue. Well, it does. It does depend on who you have with you. You know, with in our situation, we have a front of house guy that's out in, you know, in the crowd and he's at a booth and he's got all his stuff. I think you have a guy on stage that's handling what's in your monitors. And fortunately, now there's in-ear monitors. So if you see guys on stage, if you see people playing SNL or the halftime show, whatever, people have these like earplugs. They look like earplugs, but they have wires on them. And so that's your monitor mix. So that means wherever you move, you have the same thing in your ears that you need. I need more drums or I need my own guitar, or my own vocal or whatever it might be. So fortunately, because of that, if you have a good enough guy on your stage, your sound doesn't change from night to night. So people might come up to you and go, man, it sounded really bad in here tonight. And you don't know because it sounds just exactly the way it sounded the night before because all the settings are saved, you know. Yeah. Um, we have a great guys with us. A uh, guy named Charlie Bybee, who's our monitor guy. A guy named Nate Northway, who is our, a lot, our front of house guy. And uh, man, we're so lucky to have those guys. And so we don't get much of that. You know, we don't get much of, well, it's so bad in here uh, you know, tonight. So we're, we're pretty <laughs> fortunate there. And, you know, it's, I think that's true. It doesn't matter with those guys. It doesn't matter what room you're going to. They're going to make it sound great. Uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm talking to Zach Blair of the band Hi. Rise Against, uh, lead guitarist. So when you do get to venues and you do do sound, do do. I love when you do do. <laughs> I love do do. Yeah. When you do do sound check, uh, do you consistently have a go to guitar riff that you like to test out, or do yeah. you kind of switch it up? I play rock bottom by the band UFO from the seventies, Michael Shanker. Yeah. It's like the greatest rock and roll riff of all time. And it's super unsung, but it's the best. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm a huge rock and roll fan, you know, so ACDC, Van Halen and stuff like that. And all those riffs are, you know, iconic and amazing and the best riffs of all time, Led Zeppelin, things like that. However, the song rock bottom by the band UFO, listen to that opening riff and I will bet you it's the greatest rock and roll guitar riff you've ever heard. So usually every sound check I play it just because I'm a dork and I do things like that. I want to talk about your rock and roll history. Uh, again, I'm talking to uh, Zach Blair from Rise Against. Um, you joined the band um, after it was already formed. So the b band was formed in 99 and I believe you joined around 2007. I've joined in January of 2007. So it's been almost 15 years now. It'll be, it'll be 15 years in January, uh, this coming January. What was the um, first day of school feels like when you first joined the band? You know, it was interesting because I knew the guys already from touring in other bands. You know, we've all been doing this. When you're doing this sort of at a certain level or professionally, it's a small knit world right. in this punk rock thing. So a lot of the people we see on a day to day basis are people I've been working with for 20, 25 years. You know, the descendants are about to go on tour with us 
And that's Bill Stevenson and Stephen Edgerton, who produced my first band's record in 1995. You know, so it's just that kind of thing. But anyway. Was that Hagfish? That was Hagfish. That's okay. crazy. You know that. Yes, that was Hagfish. I'm and, a stalker. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. That's awesome. See you know. outside, Zach. Yeah, I'll be there. Um, so that, so, so that was when, I mean, I band started and I was in high school. I was 17 and that was my job. I quit high school actually, which I don't recommend. And I did Hatfish for 10 years. And then I did Guar. And then I played in a band with Bill Stevenson called Only Crime that toured with Rise Against. So it's how it all begat one another. So I knew the guys and I was very fortunate in the fact that they liked my playing. They liked me as a person and they put a lot on me. And it was, they were leaving to go on tour in about a week with My Chemical Romance. It was a big sporting arena tour. And if I had sucked, you know, it would have messed them up. So the first day was interesting because I'm here with my buddies and these guys that I knew pretty well, but we had never played together or in a, you know, that sort of context. So that was really interesting because, you know, you really got to feel everybody out and, oh, this guy does this this way. How am I going to react to that and stuff like that, you know? Um, can we talk about Guar? Sure. I mean, listen, so anyone who's watching this interview, if you don't know Guar, crawl out from under your rock but also yeah. bring an umbrella and a raincoat because you're gonna get bloodied up yeah yeah so how many years were you with guar i joined guar uh, it it's foggy but like 98 99 and i left in about 2002 so uh, yeah i mean such an interesting band such a great crowd what a stage show no. um but boy you you wind up pretty messy and sweaty at the end of the night um Disgusting. was it an a, was it a nice part of the departure to be like, ah, finally, jeans and a t-shirt and I don't have to necessarily shower at the end of the night? Absolutely. I mean, Guar is, you, those costumes don't get washed, you know, so you're getting like skin irritations and rashes and it's just gross. Um, so you're gross for an entire tour. You just are. You just smell. It's terrible. Uh, my brother used to always say, I come home for tour, he goes, oh, you still smell like Guar, you know. Uh, <laughs> But they needed a guitar player. My band Hackfish had broken up. They needed a player. And they started auditioning people. And because same deal, through friends of friends of friends of people I had toured with, I knew guys in the band. And they thought of me, even though my band Hackfish sounded like the Descendants. We didn't, we weren't a thrash metal band, but they knew I was into thrash metal. I've always have been since I was a kid. And so they flew me out and they're like, do you want to trim audition? And I, I was like, I'm not going to get this gig, but this would be fun to go try and be able to tell people at parties or in interviews like this or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I got the gig, which was nuts. And so it, that started the sort of most surreal next few years of my life. It was bananas, uh, what was going on. There's actually about to be a documentary about Guar, the definitive real deal that I did a real long interview for. And, I'm really proud of i'm really proud to be a part of it so it's it's going to come out soon it's interesting uh, that you have to actually point out that it's like a real interview because i mean that's the shtick of guar is yeah. every interview is different every story is different and it's like it's a improv um yeah. so and i didn't i didn't really promote that i had been in guar when i first started in rise again so i kind of liked it being sort of like a bit of a rumor and mm -hmm. you know but uh, I had quit in 2002. He was in Guar, and he also eats Pop Rocks and drinks soda pop. And yeah, yeah. his stomach explodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all these crazy stories. Urban legends. But, but, but you know, like, so so I got to go back a few years ago um, and write and record, not the last record, the record before last. Uh, the guitar player that had replaced me, a guy named Corey Smoot, had died. He died on tour. And they were just, they didn't know what to do. They needed to look for a guitar player, but they also had to make a record. And so I was in the middle of Rise Against tours and things like that. And since they're family, yeah. I um, I went back. And it was really great to be a part of it again and kind of write thrash metal with Guar. And then they were touring that record. And unfortunately, Dave Brocky, the sort of penultimate singer of, you know, he was Guar, he died, which is really unfortunate. But I'm so glad I got to be a part of his last sort of creative endeavor. Uh, you talk about family and the band being family, and you actually even mentioned your brother earlier. Yeah. Uh, your brother is is a rock and roller, too. He's yes, uh, he in the band The Toadies. He is in The Toadies. Awesome Kingdom! I know. 
They still do really well. They're still together. They're about to go on a two month tour with the Reverend Horton Heat. Yeah. Do, do um, they still do Dia de los Toadies? They haven't done that in a few years, but I think they're trying to mount that again. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things where, like, if you're not from Texas, you don't get the sort of impact of the Toadies, you know, yeah. this band that had hits in the 90s and stuff. But they're such an important, interesting, amazing band. Uh, that still put out great records. And he's been playing with them almost as long as I've been in Rise Against. But he was in Hackfish with me. He was in Only Crime with me that we did with Bill Stevenson, who's Rise Against producer. You know, the idea was for us to always play together, but then life didn't work out that way. And, you know, we still wanted to be musicians. So so how how does that work? Is it is it hard to then see? I mean, touring life is tough. Um, do you not get yeah. to see your brother that frequently because the stars don't align as much because of tour dates? Yeah, we really don't, you know. And when we're home, you know, we're both in Texas, but he lives in Amarillo and I live in Austin, and that, that those are nine hours away from each other. So, yeah. you know, it's it's that that is tough because we talk every day. I was just talking to him before I got on the phone with you, actually. About me. You guys were talking about me. Yeah, we were. I'll tell him you said hi. <laughs> um, do you guys talk about doing something together, creating the band? Hey, let's 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 do this. Like what, we do. what are we, we recording? Talk, we're always trying to play together and figure out some sort of project to be able to do that. Yeah. This is sort of always always a topic of conversation. Yeah. Um, can we talk gear? You're a Gibson guitar guy, right? I'm a Gibson guitar guy. That's yeah. your go to. Um, how yeah. did you get how did you fall in love with Gibson? Well, you know, I, I was never a guy that like not disparaging other guitar companies because there's some amazing guitar companies made by other companies. But mm -hmm. for me, it's always either some sort of a, of a mod on a Gibson or a Fender guitar. Yeah. Being such a fan of classic rock and rock and roll and like the, the history of it and everything else. My father was a radio DJ for a living. That's what he did. He was a classic rock radio DJ. So he had this sort of midnight request hour where you'd call and go, I want to hear the Doobie Brothers or Vanilla Fudge or Black Sabbath. You know, it was like the 70s and the 80s. So we didn't have any money, but he always had free records. And so it's a long, long answer, but like those guitar players were the guys that I idolized. So it was Angus Young and it was Pete Townsend and it was Jimmy Page and it was Billy Gibbons. And it was all of these Gibson players. And then, you know, like, of course, Stevie Ray Vaughan and the Vaughn brothers happened in Texas and stuff. And those were all Fender players. But I was just already sort of infected with Gibson being life for me, you know, and not saying anything against Fender guitars. I think Fender guitars are great. And I have a few myself, but it's for this band and for everything that I've done sort of professionally outside of Guar. I didn't play Gibson and Guar because I just blood and fake, you know, crazy. I, I just played free stuff like the stuff that they gave for um before rise against it's always been before i was in the band tim and whoever was playing guitar before always used gibson guitars as well it's just been the sort of industry standard you know and definitely the standard for me and and for what i've always felt was better for what i was doing you know yeah and and all my idols too you know it's like all right rad i can be michael shanker you know even though it was a flying v but you know what you know what i'm saying uh, well, for those of you watching, you can certainly check out Zach Blair performing with uh, one of his cool Gibsons on Access TV's new series. It's called If These Walls Could Rock. Uh, his episode with Rise Against is on Wednesday, August the 11th. You guys are performing a song called Nowhere Generation. What can you tell me about this song? Uh, it's a title track off our new record, The Nowhere Generation. Um, you know, we wrote the record before the, before COVID and before the shutdown and all that stuff, but it's amazing how, you know, Tim's always usually pretty clairvoyant about what might be happening next, you know, or w w what political movement might be happening or whatever. And, you know, a lot of the times the lyrics just kind of work, even if it's not his clairvoyance, it's just kind of work, you know, over what might be happening in your life or politically at the moment. And so a lot of people think this was like our recovered record. Well, the truth is we had it done before it, but it really speaks to the times. Yeah. Um, like a lot of Rise Against does. It's like usually the uh, civil disobedience, somebody not taking it anymore, speaking up, using their voice um, and doing things for themselves. And so that's that's it's also speaking to the youth who's kind of getting a play that can we cuss? Can we cuss? Yeah kind of getting a plate of shit, you know, um, they're always kind of getting a plate of shit by their parents and their grandparents, you know, like, well, we saw this up, here you go. What are you going to do with it now? And this, you know, latest political climate mm -hmm. 
is I feel so sorry for teenagers at this point. It's like, it couldn't be more. So, you know, here, deal with that. You know, <laughs> I get to retire. Now you got to iron this shit out. All this stuff I fucked up, you know? Yeah. Hope you've been watching a lot of zombie apocalypse movies because you're going to need that training. No that shit. skill that's needed. Crazy, man. It is indeed. Zach, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Good luck on tour and stay safe, all right? Thank you. We will do. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know. Just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into. Or just say hi, man. I like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.